Hello everybody, welcome to Primus. This is B for Belarus program and this time the major theme of uh, our program is Roots of Belarusian Cruelty, Tolerance and Attitude to Power. Why Belarusian police are so brutal and merciless? We are covering this issue with uh, Vladimir Boranich, a country consultant and media analyst. Vlad, hello. Hello. Uh, Two, three months ago, we couldn't expect, couldn't uh, anticipate this kind of turn events in Belarus. Uh, first, we see that protests had been going on for over 70 days, but at the same time, we witnessed unprecedented cruelty, torture, and cases of a Nazi type of behavior of Belarusians against Belarusians. Uh, as of today, we have over 14,000 detained people about 1500 beaten and tortured in uh, by police in different places both on the way to prison detention centers and in detention centers and uh, arguably about six deaths caused by police during this uh, uh, peaceful uh, popular revolution uh, how can you explain let's elaborate on that very important issue roots of cruelty of one social group against the others. What do you think about it? Well, it's a very uh, complicated question. I mean, this, uh, this core of it, because mm -hmm. we talk about uh, different behavioral types, different mm -hmm. uh, social strata. And, uh, you know, uh, as I told you, when we've been talking before, it is just informal conversation that I experienced, you know, these people going into the deep, deep, deep working at the hospital, you know, for two months, except when those events were taking part, it just went there to work as, you know, just just as, as a regular elevator boy, let's say. So, but, you know, I, I, I met all these people um, and those who were, who suffered, those mm -hmm. who were carrying, you know, in this emergency, I was working in the emergency mm -hmm. uh, part, and the emergency hospital, actually. And, um, and I could see what the reaction was from the personnel, doctors, mm -hmm. and this, you know, higher strata of, the, you know, this level of educated doctors, people. educated people, and those who are like, you know, this uh, nurses and uh, how they call this uh, helpers mm -hmm. who are, you know, kind of sub mm -hmm. sub nurses or how they call, they just medical uh, assistants, me medical assistants, yeah, um, uh, there's elevator people who, you know, elevator operators and uh, different, you know, plumbers, uh, carpenters. Okay, but still, but, go, you know, go to I could see the and, whole, uh, this kind of cruelty. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, cruelty does not come from out of nowhere. If you look at those guys who are, you know, with police, who are empowered with, uh, with, uh, with authority, they can do whatever they want. It comes from, uh, you know, Actually, it comes back to the nature, I would call them educated people versus uneducated mm -hmm. people. And moreover, we've been talking about this in the past, village against the village city. Against the city. Mm -hmm. This is, I think this is the, the main uh, dividing line. Because yeah, yeah, but in the village, I, I came from the village, right? And we were uh, brought up in a way to respect others, to be, uh, to treat animals in uh, the way that uh, presumes kind of responsibility. Well, so you know, you know, because in a slaughtering a cow or a sheep or uh, um, a pig, uh, yes. it required some skills, and uh, you know, even like treating animals in a kind way was a part of our culture. Why? Uh, well, people are different, right? And uh, I'm far from the thought that people, of all these policemen and uh, special troop uh, representatives, all they are uh, from the village. There must be some other reason than that. Is it about the way they are brainwashed? Is it the way they were taught? Uh, is it the way they uh, understand what's going on around? Because if you are told uh, all the time that people who protest with uh, white and red and white flags 
are uh, enemies of the state. They are to destroy your country, your stability, your whatever uh, roots, or history. Then you uh, treat those people, protesters, like enemies. Well, you know, this, as I said, this is very complicated, uh, social, sociologically mm -hmm. difficult question because uh, you can't say, say they just village is just very it's figure of speech mostly. It's an exaggeration, I would say, because uh, it's even simplification to to to, to this level. Because uh, when we take it generally, if we take Belarus in general, as uh, it's a post-Soviet country in its, mm -hmm. its aggravated form, it's mm -hmm. in uh, such distorted, it's like mini-Soviet Union with its wars, maybe not wars, but it's some somewhat uh, grotesque uh, mm -hmm. features being, uh, you know, enlarged, so to say. For example, this current, yeah, like, like this yeah. regime, uh, if we take back to Soviet Union, uh, human life was nothing there, and still now in Belarus, human life is very, very cheap. Uh, if you look at uh, just in general, what the attitude toward people in the healthcare, about uh, like insurance and everything, like uh, I mean, in general, how the attitude, social uh, security, mm -hmm. uh, even. Salaries, if you take life in Belarus, is very cheap, mm -hmm. and uh, thus uh, this is one of the points when when there is no limits to these atrocities. On the other side, there are, uh, there is very little uh, there is very little area, how to say, mm -hmm. very little opportunity to self-realize. Those guys in police, they can't realize themselves otherwise than being in, in police. And yeah, but you know, yeah, being uh, part of force structure is one thing. Uh, you know, army people, officers, you remember this noble officer, owner of an officer. Soldiers uh, are treated in the way, or were kind of, you know, brought up in the way. Please respect old people, respect children. Do not be, do not use force against uh, the innocent. Right now, we see that you have on the one hand police and uh, special troops uh, forcing people into some sort of behavior, beating them, torturing them. Again, we had documented thousands of cases of yes, documented there is on torture, yes. rape, uh, yes. murder. Still. Uh, uh, not a single criminal case opened against them. People, you know, the people go out in the street, walk, they protest, they demand freedom of all, freeing all political prisoners, they demand uh, free and fair vote count, they essentially demand uh, the uh, uh, the observation of the Constitution, the uh, respect to Constitution. While police, they have never been... Um, responsible for anything. No, I don't know a single case when a, a, v, a, a top military or police boss uh, was sentenced to some long term in prison for not abusing punished, power, not even lightly for abusing punished. power, for yeah. torture. So essentially we have this situation when uh, the authority is surrounded by police and force structures uh, preserve their status of a feudal state in the center of Europe. Well, that's right. We've been talking about this many times in the past, about uh, the general situation in Belarus, the general culture. But here, those who didn't hear those programs uh, would just uh, remind that Belarus is mostly peasant country in its mm -hmm. culture. It, you know, most of the population mm -hmm. comes from the villages. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, again, this is not just villages. It's collective farm, a Soviet heritage. In Soviet, in Soviet times, in general, if you take... Uh, the street, let's say, just not necessarily village. Mm -hmm. There would be some uh, living. Uh, how does just um, this? You know, this part of the city mm -hmm. where people most live. It's like like a, uh, like a bedroom mm -hmm. area. They, they call them. Uh, people there were mostly in my mm -hmm. times of my childhood, in my school mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. There were gangs, kind of gangs. They were yeah. fighting severely because mm -hmm. um, there was no other uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. right. And there has always been a cult of. 
force, the brutal force. It's like uh, macho like culture, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you can fight it's just no, but fighting against uh, uh, other guys, but fighting against pensioners, fighting against students, fighting against innocent people with anything in their hands. Yes. They say they pray not to touch, to observe, to it's like the agenda of the protesters is very noble and very clear. It does not have violence in it. Well, that's 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 kind of you know uh, logical development of the post-Soviet uh, let's say subculture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where with this uh, mm -hmm. uh, negligence to law, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to human rights, mm -hmm. to basic mm -hmm. human principles, I would say. Yeah. Because if you see that uh, the main um, agenda is to keep power. From one guy, it seems for example. like that. But uh, well, explain, uh, try to elaborate on this. In the Soviet Union, we were, we lived under the Iron Curtain, and uh, it took some efforts to uh, get an alternative information, like BBC, yes. Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty, and stuff like that. Right now, you can go to a social network, you can uh, go to internet, dozens of thousands of different websites, alternative information. Still, people believe in TV propaganda both from Russia or Belarus and they ignore or uh, any other alternative source of information even relatives even classmates even neighbors they don't trust them they trust unknown people talking heads over the television what is this kind of phenomenon why are people so blinded by propaganda and don't trust their own eyes and their own kind of uh, inner circle. Well, that's quite understandable. It's quite a known phenomenon where, where um, people live in this, um, this how to say, it, um, apolitical. Mm -hmm. They they are absolutely uh, they they afraid to go into politics. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's uh, you if you to be interested in politics, mm -hmm. you have to think. Mm -hmm. And remember our favorite libertarian uh, mm -hmm. slogan, uh, think, it is not painful. It is not painful, exactly. But it is painful for them because uh, they feel, uh, uh, feel kind of, uh, un they feel uncomfortable when they think about it, the authorities are bad, so they have to do something about it. Uh, or other protest, or... Uh, to, not to agree with authorities, so it's, it's more comfortable for them to live in that, um, let's say, cage where in, where everything is fine for them. They see that. Uh, but even it's like even like fine, right? Uh, you remember during the presidential election campaign, one of the supporters of Lukashenko, when she was making um, a public statement, said that I have a dream. I have never been to the sea to a sea. Uh, in my life. I've been working for 32 years and that's my dream. Uh, please uh, let me uh, make this dream come true. This is the standard that she has in her life. So for 30, over 30 years she failed to uh, save enough money to at least once go to a sea and enjoy it. And she argues that the country that uh, Lukashenko is, has been running for 26 years is socially oriented. Uh, well, this uh, this myth about social oriented state we've uh, kind of dissipated yes. it long in our previous programs. It's uh, now we see this completely ruined because um, what kind of social state can be if uh, pensioners are being beaten by police, for example? And um, again, uh, we go to the core or the social core of this problem. There is a cult of violence among, uh, let's say, among um, you know young people of certain education level. Let's say, mm -hmm. I've been on that uh, level myself in my young years. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in martial arts, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's why, actually, if you look into uh, Belarus, mm -hmm. one of the top. Mm -hmm. um, 
our our fighters in like MMA, you know, this um, martial arts, let's say, in martial mm -hmm. arts, martial especially arts, yeah. in, in uh, this Thai, uh, Muay Thai, for example, we have uh, champions there. They are, World champions, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're very effective because, you know, as again, uh, as I remember my younger years when I was in Taekwondo, you know, in boxing, uh, life is cheap here and uh, it's... Um, it's kind of, you know, it's the only uh, thing where you can find uh, yourself in some somewhere you can go out. It's like s escapism in a way, right? So you, escapism, you but are this involved cult, in some kind of activity and cult of... Uh, cult of violence, of violence. Yeah, but, but even 30 years ago, well, a village against village, street against yes, street, district against district. There's like fight gangs, groups of youngsters, teenagers right. fighting each other that want... But now somehow it... Uh, Maybe I'm r I wrong. It got broken, and yes, uh, we, we don't, don't always see this. We don't have it, and yeah. this, there are other uh, kind of beacons to strive for, like wealth, prosperity, popularity, uh, happiness. Well, you name it. Somehow, uh, these four structures. When I uh, like after sixty something days uh, of Protestant uh, conflict, when some of these uh, special troopers were asked. Uh, about the the ability and their kind of readiness to shoot at people, they said, "Well, we are ready to get firearms uh, and start shooting at people." So it's well, again the kind of mental block of not killing people is no longer there. They are so nervous, they're so at the edge <coughs> that they're ready to kill their own neighbors, compatriots, uh, whoever, because they were ordered. And, you know, they, like uh, two days ago, there was this outrageous case when a flower shop owner yes. who gave flowers to women because he, uh, he enjoyed them, he was so proud of them. He was so severely beaten by police, tortured, obviously, they could hardly understand what's going on. He's got fractures of his skull, uh, bones broken, and he, and this is in daylight. Well, again, uh, let me tell you, that's not because by order. Uh, nobody would force people, mm -hmm. even, even, you know, we had in history, we mm -hmm. had examples when there was a uh, shooting squad, they, they were ordered to shoot, but somebody would, you know, raise their mm -hmm. uh, gun higher mm -hmm. and wouldn't aim mm -hmm. to this uh, victim. So everywhere... Uh, order won't be fulfilled if uh, there are no, no those mm -hmm. who are ready to fulfill those orders. Mm -hmm. You can just, just you know, just do it um, reluctantly and something like. But these guys, they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are cruel not because they're ordered to be cruel. Mm -hmm. They are, they enjoy. Of course, there is brainwashing behind it. Yes, mm -hmm. they, they, they. Kept into in in their barracks and uh, mm -hmm. and being brainwashed, they they allowed to drink uh, you know vodka, maybe take drugs, etc. But again, uh, somebody has has to have inclination to, to do this. For example, you and I wouldn't do this. Uh, but uh, remember, I told you that when I've been working at the hospital, mm -hmm. I was talking to different people. Mm -hmm. This low level, let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. just uh, elevator operators. Mm -hmm. or or this uh, medical assistances or blue color or cle workers. cleaners like mm -hmm. those you know this of uh, let's say of lower social stratum mm -hmm. um, they were they were shouting to me, for example, if we would get uh, AK for this, you know, these uh, guns, we, we would shoot them. Right, we'll shoot them. Those, you know, ladies, old ladies, like sixty years old ladies, their mothers actually to those guys who are shooting. Yeah. They were they were ready now, like like to very beat me. Right? I, I, would, I would ask them. Justifying very, I would ask them very calmly. You know, I would say, mm -hmm. I would say, could you please, again. 
think about what you said. You're ready to shoot these guys. You're, are you ready to shoot uh, women, children, teenagers, uh, pensioners. pensioners, just ordinary people like mm -hmm. you on the streets? They're just walking, uh, not you know. They're just they have peaceful. different mindset. They yeah, they're different, just uh, they're just walking. They they, not, not, what's they do around. nothing bad. Yeah, they just walk on street. Exactly. Yes, I would kill them all. I would shoot them. Why they're on streets? Let them work. They don't want to work. They just you know they are there. So this is something like um, irrational. Something irrational. I don't know. I, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's like in this case, Belarusians, like many other people, probably are uh, made of uh, contradictions. When you ask whether you believe in God, like uh, about eighty percent of Belarusians say, yeah, we believe in God. Yeah. But then, what does it mean to believe in God? Does it mean that you are ready to kill anybody who has a different opinion? Mm -hmm. Does it mean that you want to burn on a fire anybody who uh, has Uh, white and uh, red and white flag. It's like intolerance that borders uh, kind of cruelty and, and, and desire uh, and acceptance of uh, torture and even murder. Because like, even now, the attitude of authorities, you have, okay, some people were raped and documented, no criminal cases, but some people, like six, were murdered. Yes. Like, these are corpses, they were burned, they have their own relatives around why isn't there a single case criminal investigation of these cases because you know we can you cannot how to justify a murder under any second especially with these protesters were murdered not because they were through cocktail molotov uh, To, to other people, to police. They did not attack, they didn't have any guns, any knives, anything in their hands. They were peaceful demonstrators. They wanted to have a dialogue. And now it never happened. And it's like this guy for, with the flower shop. He's an entrepreneur. He brings benefit to the country. He generates profit. He creates jobs. He is uh, the example of, of a peaceful, responsible citizen. And somebody from police hated the, him so much and he wanted to send some kind of a message why in the daylight in downtown Minsk this kind of person uh, with his wife uh, Katya Haroshina and Maxim Haroshin why do you believe that happened and it happened after 9 and 11th of October events it happened after Saturday and Sunday each Sunday events when uh, hundreds of people are detained and dozens are beaten and even now that is something well, outrageous and horrible uh, here I think uh, it's, uh, for me it's quite simple I mean uh, these guys I mean in Police form and uniform. These uniform guys, mm -hmm. they 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 represent uh, actually they represent the special forces. Mm -hmm. So no matter. I've been mean, just mm -hmm. generally we call them police. Although mm -hmm. it's not police, actually they still are being named militia in in, in Belarus. Uh, the official name of police force is militia. Mm -hmm. So actually they now as serve as militia. You know, just uh, this is the time when they really uh, up to their name mm -hmm. and. Um, And um, I'm surprised not because of their cruelty. Mm -hmm. As I said, their, in, their internal culture, their mm, view of life, their general personalities, if you look at them, they, everything you know, leads them to that. It's, it's okay for them. They enjoy it. And they enjoy this violence, they enjoy uh, tormenting and uh, humiliating other people. Torture, But brutality. the thing is mm -hmm. that uh, it happens because they're allowed to do that. So uh, apparently in this case... They are sure that there is, won't be any responsibility, yes. criminal or any uh, apparently responsibility. These two days, like uh, first days of those protests, they were allowed to do, the, they were told by their uh, commanders there in their barracks, mm -hmm. just do whatever you want, just don't kill. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I'm, I'm sure they, they, they had their limits what they can do. Mm -hmm. Uh, this time, probably they have been instructed, yes, do maximum cruelty, again, mm -hmm. if you want to do that, do that, or this, or do this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when they saw this guy, somehow they 
maybe they they were given orders i mean maybe there was i'm sure there was some boss behind them on on their walkie talkie he would say no but okay thing, if take this guy they want to address him and give him like 15 days in prison whatever even a criminal case you can invite him to go to police he did not resist he did not throw knives at them he did not shout and make and uh, obscene things at them he followed them and instead of just being uh, uh, following law abiding and uh, uh, sticking to uh, like basic fundamental rules of human behavior they somehow uh, attacked him beat him and uh, well and probably would uh, uh, turned him into a vegetable because the guy couldn't uh, react yes, responsibly right now and that's kind of you know it's outrageous it's a message sent this to message. all entrepreneurs every people who instead of just uh, like uh, turning from uh, a money making machine to a citizen is a kind of a warning signal don't do that stick to your money and don't do politics don't do public activism at all Yes, they made example of him. It's just uh, they just uh, took somebody he was unlucky enough, you know, to to become this example example of or how to say this is um, the case where they made show you know, of, of him what what's going to be with other if you if you don't uh, go to your homes and stop protesting and um Mm-hmm. Again, there are there are different uh, people in those uh, f- in this police force. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them are real sadists, you know. They're real. Yes, sadism, yeah. They're yeah. they're psychically abnormal, and that's that's understandable. They they take such people who go through these tests, very severe tests, and with cult of violence. And, uh, Let, well, uh, one Ukrainian journalist, Arkady Babchenko, he criticized Belarusians for the peaceful nature of protests. He called them pink ponies. Mm-hmm. Uh, 70 days after protests began, he said that that could be have some positive connotation. How would uh, pink ponies, in inverted commas, react uh, after October 25th, when uh, ultimatum that Svetlana Tikhanovskaya put forth to Lukashenko to uh, stop start negotiation, free political prisoners, uh, is over. I mean, there's no ultimatum. The Both sides are tired, nervous, at the verge of changing tactics you know the uh, the staging of the uh, cocktail molotov throwing at one of the uh, police uh, uh, departments in Minsk obviously shows that many people are uh, hot heads inside the power uh, want to describe Belarusian society as being more radical and radicalized and dangerous uh, so uh, would pink ponies turn into wild determined horses or into submersive submissive and obedient cats um you know it's uh, i've been thinking about it all the time since it has begun because i remember you know those uh, protests 20 years ago mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, 25 years ago even when they were you know more violent there mm-hmm. were guys who of mm-hmm. that of that uh, age, like I was young, and uh, mm-hmm. there were certainly from those. Ga- I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, just not literally, just like from gangs. I don't mean gangs. Those from these areas mm-hmm. with uh, more violence in mm-hmm. in city city ghettos. Let's say mm-hmm. uh, they were more ready to fight with police, but uh, they had some, you know, uh, clashes with police that time. But their generation is gone mm-hmm. now. Uh, somehow. Somehow, somehow this you know uh, age of mm-hmm. online of internet uh, even these guys they they disappear they are now uh, more fight in computer games mm-hmm. and I would say it's very difficult now to find somebody uh, just effectively those who are ready to fight with police I mean because it's it's again it takes a risk to to be beaten or even to be imprisoned mm-hmm. and because of that arrested everything like that but in general if you look at the population mm-hmm. uh, the, the people who are involved in protests mm-hmm. 
They are very cultural. I mean, uh, many experts, like in Russia, the uh, journalists, well, they, they were surprised um, that people even stand on benches to look over heads. But that's it. They exactly. take off their shoes. Shoes, yes, and they they wouldn't they wouldn't have you know this didn't smoke there in public areas. They wouldn't um, throw away trash, mm -hmm. etc. You know, empty bottles or uh, paper, and uh, they were very very cultural. I would say it's. Something, if, if we call it a revolution, Belarusian revolution, this phenomenon is cultural revolution. I mean, in good sense, because here we see... Um, oh, but, 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 like, uh, let me uh, refer to our uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes. national poet. Like, uh, people endure, endure, and suffer, and suffer until that's enough, and then they revolt. And there's kind of this uh, legal axiom when uh, the ruler uh, is uh, a big problem. He uses, exercises torture, he resorts to violence, to murder in order to keep power, then people must revolt and get rid of this dictator. So I wonder how you see where, where, whether you see this line, red line approaching when Belarusians, they endured a lot of uh, suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of uh, injustice. Uh, and when they see that kind of when they see that police and authorities don't react, it's time for them to turn from uh, pink ponies into uh, determined and strong and fearful uh, horses. Or that will be when they saw much more violence, they would again, they would uh, hide into their other f selves when the fear and, and, and anxiety dominates. You know, um, well, let me tell you, I've been thinking about it a lot. And there are a lot of discussions about where the... Because we don't know how, the, the, how, how to react. The mm -hmm. breaking line, this uh, in, mm -hmm. in uh, crossing, the, the crossing line we, where, yeah. where we, we see this peaceful protest uh, turn violent. Mm -hmm. But you see, again, the, the nature, we've been talking about many times, mm -hmm. Belarusians are survivors. They are, uh, for, for centuries, they've been surviving as peasants, yeah, but surviving, like Lukashenko went to one of the districts, Talochin district, and he said, well, look at these heroes here. They grow potatoes. I wish all uh, citizens or residents of Minsk were like this, saying yes. that Minsk are uh, thugs and they just care about being paid and spending this money. That's it. Um, probably now we see uh, this paradigm is changing in, uh, in in behavior of people however uh, you can't change this um, deep deep mentality of the whole population it's always been i would say I don't like this word but probably belarusians are cowards you know they are they unlike for example not cowards but maybe again they they try to uh, adjust to their may, maybe a conformists. No, but you know, they've, uh, Belarusians destroyed this myth, uh, displaying their courage and determination for 60 days, 70 days. Right now, they were every Sunday, starting from like 9th of August, it's uh, ongoing protests, over 100,000 of dozens of thousands of people protesting. Uh, people were beaten uh, again, women uh, formed chains, uh, uh, different forms of public uh, display of. Uh, their position. So you used to be these cowards, you know, bootlicking, absurd, subservient. Right now, uh, like it's it's so proud to be a Belarusian because Belarusian Belarus showed to the whole world what a peaceful resi movement, uh, resistance movement is. Well, you see, we don't talk about all Belarusians. The, 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 the general number of population is very low here on those streets. There are people who are with uh, I would say with uh, enhanced mm -hmm. feeling of dignity, mm -hmm. of social responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, probably they are, and they were cultural. I've been talking to them, mm -hmm. you know, I even I was talking to the guy uh, who mm -hmm. suffered during those, who, who lost his foot uh, mm -hmm. during the first days in the, the hospital, and there was other girl who was severely injured uh, on crutches. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I, I told them about, it. they knew nothing about what was going on in 96, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I was witnessing those quite cruel mm -hmm. and with uh, quite rude slogans about, you know, president. And when I reminded them one of those, uh, they said, no, no, that's very, very, very rude, they said, very uncultural. Cultural. <laughs> Man, the, the, the guys who suffered, you know, physically, terribly suffered from, you know, one of them, they became handicapped, yep. actually. I don't know about girl, but the guy was without food. Yep. And, um, uh, but they, they still said it is not good, they're cultural. So I wouldn't say they're some sort of, you know, uh, some kind of, you know, very educated. The general mm -hmm. people, the guy was, I don't know, maybe he didn't have high education, he was a general mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. But again, the general attitude that it is, they can't imitate mm -hmm. the opposite side. Again, this kind of um, uh, inability or lack of um, compassion, um, an ability to understand the position of other person and live along with that. It's like you are different. Uh, TV, state television tells you, tells us that you are an enemy. You are paid by some Western guys. You can be a spy. That's why you you can be like annihilated. You you don't you don't belong here. So that's why it's like they. I think that that's. Because no, there's nothing in even in what I, what kind of we know what kind of Belarusian school is all about a university it does not uh, teach you right from wrong in many ways but this time uh, the time of uh, high emotions uh, people you know lost touch with reality with kindness with whatever set of values they belong to either it's like be good neighbor uh, don't use violence when you can talk uh, don't kill thy shall is like in the Bible yes, thy yes. shall not kill thy shall not uh, lie and stuff like that because in the initial initially let's uh, remind our listeners about the uh, reason uh, Belarusian society exploded was that Lukashenko gave himself 80% yes. of the vote and that outraged everybody right so lies led to cruelty, led to torture, led to murder. And right now the political conflict is still ongoing and we still don't know when and how it will end. Yes, uh, this is something, um, again, look, uh, the situation here is aggravated. I mean, uh, probably wouldn't have such protests if people had some something like solution as to leave the country. Mm -hmm. Now, Belarus, due to this, you know, general, this uh, COVID-19 scare all over the world, mm -hmm. everybody, every country, I mean, uh, namely Belarus, mm -hmm. is turned into sort of concentration camp. Mm -hmm. It's uh, people are isolated, they can't yeah. even go out of, uh, and, uh, and uh, so they have nothing to do. I mean, People, uh, again, pe people have the idea uh, that, you know, life goes on. I mean, uh, life pass passes by and you're not, and you're losing it. I mean, uh, like, um, mm -hmm. people would like to live better life mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. you know, in, in dignity, in prosperity, in health. Yep. But here we have nothing, just this collective farm where you're, you're supposed to, to be a slave, surf, uh, digging potato, and you know, the example of those who, who grow potato. I mean, oh, these yeah, peasants, you know, the low, low, low culture, low, low skilled, low yeah. educated uh, people that, again, so they, that's, how that's could you build example. a prosperous society and a uh, fast growing country based on potato? We've seen many examples in history where dignity, uh, self respect, uh, some I don't know, uh, higher values, human values, they were uh, stronger than, than, yeah, right. than fear of death, fear of injury, fear of, uh, you know, being beaten, etc. So uh, here we see that a large part of population has become 
has overcome that fear. And this That's right. So people who, uh, who lost fear, they will never go back to the prison that we've been. Uh, they've been living for uh, over 25 years. So essentially, we let's end our program by appealing to the authorities and first structures to stop violence, to start thinking not in terms of ordering of fulfilling. St- uh, um, um, uh, orders by uh, criminal bosses, by whatever nomenclatura bosses they have, but by thinking, but using uh, human compassion, uh, dignity, responsibility, because uh, we want one country, we want uh, peace, we want uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, good attitude uh, among different social professional groups, and uh, if police uh, keep using this kind of brute power which is definitely uh, against law which is against constitution then Belarusian society and Belarus would be even more dangerously torn apart and in this state it could really be a very easy uh, prey for some uh, neighbors or for some brute forces that can come up here in order to install order and bring it back to uh, order that is really a very big danger at present for our country. You know, uh, yesterday I was reading a story, just somehow somebody gave a link to me. It was mm-hmm. guy, historical figure, who was, uh, I remember his name, he was John Woods, I think. Mm-hmm. American, who was the chief, mm-hmm. uh, the main, not chief, but he was the main uh, mm-hmm. acting mm-hmm. hangman during, mm-hmm. in, in, during in, in 45 mm-hmm. in Germany. Uh, he was actually mm-hmm. hangman for in, in, in the U.S. Army mm-hmm. for those you know who mm-hmm. uh, traitors or you know who were uh, ordered to be hanged by mm-hmm. by the by the court martial. Mm-hmm. And again, those he hanged those you know uh, mm-hmm. high uh, high position criminals uh, during Nuremberg process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, he was hangman. Uh, in Japan, he was mm-hmm. hanging those uh, high-powered criminals in Japan. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's quite, quite interesting story. And to, to remind, so I also will say, I wouldn't say this. Uh, remember death like Memento Mori, mm-hmm. but remember mm-hmm. John Woods. <laughs> and he he read him about story about him. It's quite interesting. The guy enjoyed that uh, mm-hmm. the job, you know, because he he pretended he gave his like say resume to the mm-hmm. army that he mm-hmm. was professional in that, although he was mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. He simply, if you look at his pictures, he simply enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but there is always that guy. Mm-hmm. There will always be that guy who. You know, the justice will finally find its way out to, you know, there. Because uh, no matter how, uh, especially in this age when everything goes online, you can see everything is documented, everything... A lot of evidence, facts, yeah, you cannot it's just a delete matter, reality. It's just a matter of time when uh, this, those who are uh, in, in charge and those who mm-hmm. acted absolutely lawlessly they will be punished that's yes, the truth as if and justice should prevail it's a common sense actually truth justice as the foundation of our free belarus and we believe uh, let and i that uh, freedom definitely will come to our country in political civic and economic uh, clothes and that's what we really need all three in one well thank you very much for your input here and your observations vlad baranich country consultant media analyst was with us at b for belarus program we discussed the issue roots of belarusian cruelty tolerance and attitude to power why police are so brutal and merciless. Uh, We definitely do not provide decisive uh, and uh, absolute answers to these uh, very uh, important and very uh, uh, sensitive issues, but we definitely want to share and uh, urge you to think with us about them. Thank you. See you next time at B for Belarus. Thank you. Goodbye.